All right, so. So. Um. Let's uh, make sure we're, yep, we're on the proper screen. Uh, make sure I'm on the proper thing. Cool. Um. Get some, get some ambient music. So are we going to be starting, like, uh, segueing right out of the temple, or... Because we did have um, a few other things to do in Alexandria regarding talking to Artemis's mom and uh, talking to Ricardo in specific. I was thinking this would be... Ra would be doing this probably while the rest of the party was doing that stuff. Okay. Um... try this hold on I had a dream that there was a plot twist that Inari uh, was the um, was the amnesiac version of Sayako and after after they get their full memory back they, 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 they're literally just psycho. I'm not gonna bullshit you. I considered that once, and I was like, "Nah, it wouldn't work." Much as I love Sayako, she probably won't show up. <laughs> At least not in that regard. Thank God. I still have nightmares. Hmm. <laughs> Ninth level disintegrate nightmares. <laughs> I think that was the first boss phase that got cheesed through. Where like afterwards, I was like, "Wow, that was better than what the boss fight would have been." <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to think of some good town music. I mean, you could just use the regular Alexandria stuff. I could. Okay. Alticia is French. Um, I like Listalum. Uh, let's see. I also really like, uh, what's it called? Spear and Scenery, but it's got a little bit of a tropical feel to it, which isn't necessarily the Alexandria region. Oh, wait. Hmm. Mm, Bujerba is no. pretty good. I'm saving that for somewhere else. Bujerba. Yeah. All right. That's a good, easygoing town shenanigans theme. So, we will start with that. Uh, pop that into the bot. Hello, bot. Please join us. Please join our campaign bot. Uh, I thought this was a solo session. No, you know, I want to try something new. I know it's just been the two of us for a while, but... You're not going to acapella all the background music? <laughs> That's a bit loud. Turn you down. Yeah, like that. <laughs> no, I'm not. My disappointment's immeasurable. So, um... Ra had sent the telegrams, I guess it would have been like two or three hours ago. Okay. Uh, and he leaves the temple, and I guess just to play it a little, a little safe, to give them as much time to respond as possible. He's probably going to go find a quiet area, probably in one of the courtyards surrounding the temple. Mm -hmm. to sit down with the lightning magicite and try to attune to it. Alright. Since this is kind of one you're not familiar with, give me an arcana check. 
I have three character sheets. Levin does not get it. You try to you kind of try to sit down. You try to focus on it. Try to reach out to it with like your own spiritual, magical energy, what have you. And it just does not seem to stick. It's kind of like throwing a sticky ball at the wall, but the sticky ball just sort of falls off. So this process of attunement, Raz sort of sitting down cross-legged he's going into a meditative state i assume mm -hmm. probably takes course over what like 10 minutes or an hour or what's the time frame uh takes essentially like is there is there anything in place that keeps me from just trying again Um, ah, depends on how patient you are. How, how how much time do you want to give it? Um, well, let's say we give it an hour. Is that just constituting the one attempt? Um, with an hour, I will give you another two attempts. Do I take any damage from failed attempts? Not really. We are very uh, different dungeon masters. Fourteen. You might. You might just. Uh, you might just get frustrated. Uh, give me one more. Just see. Oh, there, there it is. All right. So you try it, and then you just kind of like, uh, huh? Uh, you kind of give it a moment to recollect, sort of like regain your. Uh, composure, just sort of center your thoughts. You try it again. Uh, you feel like maybe a little bit of a spark, but mm. then you give it a one more good go, and zip. In the infamous words of Sid, Bazinga. Sid never said that. Good. Uh, but zoop, you feel just a crackling run across your skin. Your hair stands on end on the back of your neck. Uh, vision flashes through your brain just like a lightning bolt. Just... Um... In your mind space... A single bolt of lightning just strikes down and crackles and makes manifest in the form of a wispy, canine-like entity. You have learned the attunement for... It's a doggo. She never summoned that one, did she? I don't think she did. I only knew about Moomba and Inari. Um. Uh, sec. Right, is there? Oh, character sheets. There we go. Um. From that. Edit and in player's journal. Let's put that in minutes. And can be edited in the journal. You have learned how to summon Raiju. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Weak to thunder, interesting. Okay. Um so that's all going on like my headspace, right? Nothing's actually happening out in the courtyard? No, not really. Um, people might get a sense of ozone layer in the air when they walk near you, but... Do I feel like my clothes are statically charged? A little bit. Okay, well, I'm going to go find a rock and ground myself. Sort of get rid of all of that. 
fix my hair a little bit. It's 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 kind of spiking up in places. Even more so than usual. More than usual. <sighs> Interesting. I look around, make sure nobody was really paying too much attention to me. Nothing? Uh... Maybe a couple of people passing in and out of the temple. A couple of researchers. Uh, he, I, I just... What? Something weird about a cloistered scholar at a temple? They just kind of blink and... Huh. He might be having a bad day. Oh, never mind him. Lunch. And they just move on. What you doing? Oh, you're doing it's a solo session. session. Oh. Have fun. Hi, <laughs> why? Um... <laughs> Ralph furrows his brow and he's like, yeah, that was kind of abrasive of me, huh? Are you recording it? Uh, yeah, I am. Sick, I'll listen to it later. Have fun. He, uh, he scratches the back of his head and he goes, uh, so so sorry, I guess. And then he turns, looks down the road leading out of the temple, back into the main thoroughfare, goes throughout Alexandria, and... <sighs> takes a deep breath. Um, I guess he's going to go to the Telegram Guild. Alright, so he's going to go to the Courier's Guild, help the tele te uh, Telegrapher Moogle. Has there been any response to the uh, any of the messages I sent out earlier? Um, remind me what messages you sent. There it. was, I believe, just the one... And then he decided not to send the other two, since they, since the party elected they were going to Highgate anyways. Okay, um, so scrolling back, it was basically him sending a message to Naladia saying, Yo, come meet me with me, I'm in Alexandria. Uh, it has to do with Ronley. Um, that's the one you sent? Yes. Um, alright. Let me check something. Turns out every named NPC is currently in mist, beating up flea urchins. Yeah, I, I know, it's just most of them. Sometimes you gotta beat up the flea urchins. Um. Alright, so the. So the uh, receptionist Moogle. Um, uh, hello. Who dis? Um... Oh, did someone join? Hi, K9. Uh, yeah, it's a Dante. Oh, Can speaking I... of K9, I got a dog! <gasps> I'm trying not to interrupt your fellows. Alright, no problem. So, um, so anyways. He walks in, goes up to the counter, clasps his fingers, Waits for somebody to attend to him. He probably oh. seems a little more patient than he usually does. <laughs> this raw is scaring me a little. Um, it's scaring me a little too. I'm not sure if I like it. <laughs> so, so a um, receptionist Moogle flutters over to you. Um, they kind of ruffle through some papers and they kind of squint their tiny little beady eyes and they're like. Uh, Ra Chevrac. Close enough. Ra Chevrac. Okay. Uh, happens I have two letters for you. That's one more than I was expecting. Uh, does it does retrieval cost anything or? Mm, no, this one's been paid for. All right. Does she hand me any? Uh, she passes you both the letters, and gives you a little salute, and is like, "Well, that's uh, business concluded. Have a good day, and make sure to hit up the Moogle Couriers Guild again if you need any." Blah 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 blah. Of 
course, of course. Uh, Ra sort of idly responds as he steps away to let the next person in line through. And he, the first thing he checks for is whether either of them are f from Naladia or the Fox. Uh, one of them seems to be marked with a sigil that is reminiscent of Highgate. Great. Um, yeah, I'm going to check that one. All right. So, um, this letter is written as follows. Uh, Ra, it has been too long. Um, as you can see, we've got ourselves a little situation with finding some sort of sense of stability in uh, Alex Shar. As you can see, the boss has taken a vested interest in dabbling his fingers out that way. And Do I get the sense that the uh, them re referring to the boss is Ronley or the fox? The fox. Okay. Um, so as best says, as I can tell she further states that these days she's pretty busy and she'd like to meet but it probably won't be anytime soon okay hmm so um, from my best appraisal of the situation does it seem like Naladia comes from a position underneath Ronley, but joined the Highgate Thieves Guild, which operates independent of that? Uh, give me an insight check. Um, as far as you know, she's pretty loyal to the Fox. Okay. She hasn't really shown much in the way disposition of loyalty towards Ronley, but the Fox... Most definitely so. I'm going to cast Sending on Naladia. Alright. And the message I send will be as thus. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fuck, I think it's three over. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Alright, I can delete these two and perfect. I've received your telegram. You made mention of busy work. Anything of urgency? My companions and I may find ourselves in Highgate come a few days. And she responds in kind. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't you love sending? Twelve, thirteen. 
<laughs> Dumb fucking spell. <laughs> Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, by two, try three, try four. Twenty-five. I guess Ra will cast sending again to say uh, what what day of the week is it? I don't really keep keep track in terms of days. Um next week might be when we get to June's Earth is not like my only real concern here. Cuz we tend to go through things pretty quickly. At least on a timeline basis. Even though it'll probably be April by the time that's happening. I'm going to say it's Tuesday. Tuesday, so like five days. Um, I'm going to cast Sunny again and say... Raw holding the empty cup. It's got like uh, white powder on his lips. He's scratching his face. You got any more of them spell slots? Nah, I'm, I'm. I have three third level spell slots. I don't even care. I'm not casting spirit guardians anytime soon. <laughs> I guess. Is is sending not a? Can't you ritual cast it? Uh, you. You could ritual cast it because I'm a really nice DM, but no, you can't regularly. That's weird. I thought that was just a thing where you could spend 10 minutes to cast a spell without spe spending a spell slot. Um, you could do that with Sayako and your Chakra Bowl. And I, for whatever reason, I thought that was just a thing that was part of spell casting. But... Ritual spells, that it has to be a ritual spell to do that. Okay. Like otherworldly calls a ritual spell, silence is a ritual spell, divination is a ritual spell, etc. Line mm. insisting the people of Alex Shar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Alright, uh, I'm not gonna cut this down, I'm just gonna use two casts of sending for it. Okay. It's gonna bite me in the ass next session when I urgently need to cast sending to contact the party, but fuck it. time I've forgotten about Alex Sharian and Ninja Waifu. <laughs> I 
I don't know why it feels like this, but the the freaking the gender ratio in Soldea feels like it's like 75 25. I just like girls. Don't we all? Uh, I guess Adante doesn't. Is this 25? <laughs> uh, you technically get 50 since I cast it twice. Oh. So you can just go ham. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 23, 24, 25. Uh, and then she'll follow that up with... <laughs> what a very ironic thing to say. And I guess I'll probably just leave it at that. Uh, what's the other letter from? Um... So... You don't know, it looks rather plain. Alright, I open it up. Uh, inside there is a black hand with we know written... No, I'm kidding. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> no, um... Inside, we see a rather elaborately written letter. And it says... Uh to Ra. And here's where you notice that while it's very succinct and neatly written and there's a good bit of, uh, you know, there's a good bit of finesse, there's also a few misspelled words. I figured it's fair that you should know the things going on and how they came to be. I'm writing you to tell you more about what happened back then with the man. Uh, she seems to spell Ara, but she can't quite know how to spell it, so she just spells for spelling the man. Wait, 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 who's the man? Uh, seems like she was trying to spell Arajul. Oh, Arajul. Oh, is this Frandoline? Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's adorable. Um. It, like... How long has it been? It's been an hour and probably like 10 minutes. I guess I'll go to Realms Ward. Alright, so do you want to head up back that way? Yeah, might as well go digging up the rest of the past. Right after touching the fucking big glowy rock that made me a schizophrenic, right? <laughs> Alright, so you head up to Realms Ward. Um... Thankfully, the campus isn't too closed off. Like, they don't have people at the gates going, Alt, who goes there? Oh, you can't be in here. Otherwise, they wouldn't get any business that way. Um, alright, so you approach the campus. Uh, you go into the courtyard at the entry. Uh, she's nowhere to be found. Do I see anybody I recognize? Um, spot out a few faces, but... I'm probably just gonna approach a crowd and say... Hey, have you seen Frandoline anywhere? Do you know where she might be? Uh, I think she was just about to get out of uh, arithmetic. And I know where that classroom is, right? 
Yeah. Great. So I'm just gonna go wait in the hall. Alright, so... How long do you wanna wait? She's just about to get out of arithmetic. I'm gonna wait until the class adjourns. Alright, so... It's about 15 minutes. The bells in the hall ring. Um... And a few of the junior students step out. Now, there's kind of a division between the students in the body. You have people who are being kind of raised to be adventurers. And then you have people who basically apply, you know, like post, like, uh, you know, in their 20s, 19s. So, like... So like I'm uh, I'm Cedric Diggory looking at a first year Harry Potter class basically. coming out. Okay. Yeah. So you basically have students like up to your uh up to your like midriff coming out of this class. Up to your like you're a pretty tall guy, aren't you? I'm like six one, yeah. Yeah. Uh coming out. Um near the back, you spot her. Um she's kinda <laughs> actually she's kinda actually dressed in um school regalia. Not regalia, that's a dumb word. Um, basically school uniform. Um, uh, she blinks, she stops. Stops! Notices you, she blinks, she says, uh, thought you would have been on your way by now. Not quite. If you need some more time, I can come back later. Um, I'm actually take my second day break um is this about the letter uh i'll put this plainly there are things that i don't know about past events that are clearly um relatively relevant to what's happened and Yours is a perspective I no doubt value, but I can also assume that it's one of trauma. If you don't want to talk, I'm sure I can get the same answers from him. Uh, she pauses a bit, and after the hall has been basically emptied and it's just you and her she's still just sitting there with a long pause um she looks up at you after considering a few moments and Uh, she simply asks, Courtyard? Sure. Alright. Uh, so. Ra's going to stop by the cafe and pick up a couple snacks for them. Okay. So, you grab a couple snacks. Um. <laughs> Actually, give me, give me, give me perhaps a deception check. Oh, am I not allowed to? Um, because I'll pay for him if I need to. I just, well, okay. Do you? Yeah. No. Um. Ra's a little too clueless to realize that he can pretend to be a part of the student body. He's sort of just acting like he always has. All right. Doesn't matter. Uh, he fails his passive insight. Um. All right, so you grab a couple snacks. It's fine. Doesn't really matter anyway. Um, you find a nice spot near the kind of the edge of the courtyard. You kind of plop down and you start to. I'm going to summon Raiju. Um, 
All right, so swirl of magic forms around you, and you get to a spot near you, and it. Uh oh. Did the bot die? We lost bot. I guess the bot died. Bot, come back to us. Wake him up. Wake him up inside. <laughs> You can't, you can't wake up. <laughs> wake him up. Wake him up. <laughs> I guess I shall make the music. Muting Muting Carol. Carol. Especially since I'm coming through on echo feedback and I don't like that. Okay. Um, alright, so you find nice spots, clued off to the side of the courtyard. Uh, you manifest plume of magic and erupts with a crackling bolt of static um your familiar just bursts into life and bro just kind of stares at him like he's seen uh, myth do it but he he realizes his hair is probably standing up a little more and the static's back in his clothes and he he sighs a little bit as he reconciles with the fact that he's probably going to have to reground himself every time this happens. But there's a really cool lightning puppy. And he looks at Frandaline and then back at Raiju and says, Look how cool that is. She just kind of nods. She seems impressed, but, you know... Ron narrows his eyes and in a weirdly sort of um, direct way asks Raiju can you talk like a Nari does? Um, Raiju just stares at you. Woof. Um, it makes a little snorting noise and as it does little plumes of lightning just shoot from its nose and then it just kind of scratches behind its ear. Uh, Ra sort of leans off to the side, picks up a little twig and tosses it past Raiju. Uh, nose is a twig, but it seems to be awaiting your command. At ease, soldier. Um. Alright, so it just kind of like looks at the twig and it just kind of walks around in circles and lays down on the spot. <laughs> Ross shakes his head a little bit and then looks back at Frandaline. Sorry about that. Anyways. Um. So. Take a little bite of her pastry bread. And just kind of looks down. She just kind of thinks of like where to begin with all this. Are we playing a different song? Uh about to yeah oh okay all right join bot i pass her some of the snacks and just say whenever you're ready and with that she begins to tell the story of how her family was a traveling one and her father carried a particular sort of sword uh, one that he would never wield but he always bore with him and how their family just traveled a lot, around a lot they were very nomadic but one day, the father decided to basically send the mother and child off in a different direction. He said, why don't you go on a headset camp over there? I'm just going to go over this way. Um, evening sets. She talks about how... She insisted with her mother that they should track the father down. 
and though her mother wished against it. She was a very hard-headed, stubborn girl even then, and so she ran off after him, uh, followed his trail, eventually coming towards the shoreline. There, she came upon a cliff and found her father slumped over. Um, a streak of blood trailing behind him. And at the end of that trail of blood was the sword that he carried. Standing before him was Arzul Felda. She tells about how she was racked with grief in that moment. That she couldn't perceive why anybody would want to do that to a man like him like her father what he might have done to earn this sort of vengeance upon him unable to come to grips with the situation she looked at the sword and out of that same grief She took it up, took claim of it, and as soon as she took claim of it, it took claim of her. So, and Ra. Roll initiative. Dun dun. Her fucking, her fucking portrait. <laughs> it kills me. I tried. Okay. <laughs> it looks like it's two years old. All right. A one. Perfect. Wait. Let me add turn. Add turn. background is an orphan. Oof. Uh, the initiative should be 10, not 1. Oh. Also, I don't think I have controlling permissions over the token. You should. Definitely don't. I can ping the space you want to move it to. Like I, I'm not really a stickler for the controls. One second. Can you see that? See what? I just did show show to players. Uh, all I have open is turn order and Frandalin Young. That says that it can be edited and controlled by you. Oh, it's the token. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Not the character sheet. I'm good with the character sheet. I'm, I'm sorry. I got all this. Got She's all this. 12. She's 12. She's not even four feet tall. <laughs> and she's faster than most adult men. <laughs> Okay. 
All right. It's your turn. All right. Uh, cast. I have one spell slot. I cast Hex, and I give him disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. All right. And then I'm going to go beat the shit out of him. Is it an 11 hit? Nope. So you go and you just pick up your sword and you just make a swing at him, charging, yelling, and he just easily weaves to the side of it. Uh, his turn, and he does not do anything. He just stares you down. All right. Ten. Uh, you bring in an uppercut, and he just sways back. Uh, he does not do anything else, though. Get your head in the game, friend, Aline. Twenty-one. How's that? Uh, this time, this time, after you swing it up, uh, and you sway his back, you bring it down an arc, uh, and you feel that the sword registers. Uh, you feel a great glee as it does. Uh, roll damage. I think I rolled max on that slashing I rolled... I rolled max on both of those dice. Nice. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. It's it's plus three magic. Never mind. <laughs> of course, it's plus three magic. <laughs> ah. uh, he stumbles back a little. Um, now he looks at you. And... He makes two attacks just in a blink of an eye. Uh, 29 hit? Uh, no, 29 does not hit. <laughs> yes, you can't that, fool that, me. That, that 29 hits. I cast shield, giving me 16 AC. Uh, worst part is that 29 was a crit. Of course it was. And... Yeah, he just does a one-two slash with his rapier, uh, dealing... Enough. Dealing enough yeah. damage. Is it eight? Um... The first attack is a 20. Yep, I'm down. Technically, that that's no? that's that's technically auto death. <laughs> well, he was making it non-lethal. <laughs> Thank goodness. All right, so he basically just one two hits you. He knocks you all the way back to here. Uh, you drop down to one HP. Uh, you still going? You are now suffering one level of exhaustion. Okay. Um, your bones are creaking. You're you're aching, but you prop your the tip of the sword against the ground. You push yourself up. Uh, you are screaming for vengeance, and you won't let the death of your father go unanswered. I'm gonna use the hexblade's curse on him. All right. And I'm gonna. Run up and I'm going to move over to here. And instead of attacking, I'm going to try and goad him to me. All right. Um 
Grrr. Uh, yeah, you, you snarl at him, uh, defiantly. Uh... Looks down at you, sneering. Snarls, foolish girl. And he is going to make a thrust at you to try and push you off. Alright. Head and roll attack. Um. You feel a blur and then a sting through your shoulder as he withdraws the uh, rapier. He moved faster than you could even blink. Um, and then he thrusts a foot at you. Um, give me a... Give me a strength saving throw. Nice one for Andy. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> you feel your ba you feel your balance topple and you go tumbling down the cliff. Do I still have the sword? Uh, huh? Do I still have the sword? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, you fall. Uh, you lose the grip of the sword, but it's falling with you, and your vision fades. And the last thing you can see is him standing over the cliff, staring down at you. Great. That's awful. Um, cut to... Whoop, going back up to, uh... Where's Alexandria? Uh, that's not Alexandria. That's a start screen. Thank you. No problem. That's a beautiful peacock. Uh, flamingo. Flamingo. So Ra takes a deep inhale and then slowly lets it out. Uh, she continues to say that... She continues her story is that... When she next washed up, she couldn't help but hate herself for how weak she was how much how much power the sword gave her and how easily outclassed she was the sword kept telling her kill 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 or you will die friendling i have some questions These... She takes a big exhale. Uh, Ra sort of just like hands her more than more than half of the snacks he ended up getting from the cafe, just letting her have some of his portions as he kind of uh, furrows his brows contemplatively. These are more to do with Sid, though, and um, the sword in particular. I don't really need a biography. I know that he ended up finding you, and he has worked very hard to make sure that you're capable of um, raising yourself above the tragedies of your past. What happens if someone else touches the sword? Is that something he's forbidden? Is it something he's done? Is it something anyone else has done? Um, she kind of uh, folds her hands in her lap and then looks up and she holds a hand out and as she does, the blade coalesces out of thin air. Just wisps of shadow just manifest and 
take the shape of it. And it looks it like... looks like a complete sword, right? Or is it like a shard? Uh, it looks like a complete sword. Okay. Uh, so wisps of shadow just sort of gravitate towards it. Just. It uh, really, thing... really bad juju keyblades into existence. Yep. Uh, there's a single red eye-shaped gem. Um. Uh, at the base of the hilt. Well, best I, best I can fathom. Uh, she lets it dismiss by spreading her palms, or spreading her fingers. So it just kind of just unmakes itself. It's bound to my blood, and until that blood is shed, she kind of just. Makes a slanted expression. I see. Do you think that it was the same way with your father? He carried it, but he never used it. Now that I think about it, you could say a lot of things that Sid said. It's that <sighs> the strongest demons are the ones you feed. So, best as I understand it. It's very likely what you're suffering through is not something that has happened in recent history. That sword is part of a trio. It and its other, um, the other two are kept separate through what I can only imagine is a great vested interest of the people that are knowledgeable about its capabilities and I think your father was one of those people I think that what they were trying to protect the world from is what you are currently fighting against Do you have any questions for me? Um... She kind of, uh, looks down at her toes. Do you know what this thing might be? Are you familiar with uh, an organization known as the Shadow Hunters? Uh, yeah, she nods. Heard of them? Well, Shadow Hunters are, in a way, a little full of themselves. They deem themselves in a specific fashion the only ones capable of really handling the things that originate from the void by taking a portion of the void into themselves. And I'm sure you know that I am a... well... in a fashion, I'm one of them. I've done the associative rituals and I'm able to draw on the same pool of strengths that they do. However, he rubs his chin. All I have beyond that are theories. 
because I cannot help I cannot help but make the judgment that the three swords, including the one you have, have some tie to the void. Because otherwise, you would never have met that man with the rapier. She's kind of trying to process what this all means. She might be... It's a big bite for her to chew. I'm sure. So she looks at you again. She's like, so... I have leads on where the other two are. Um, she pushes herself up from the uh, bench that she was sitting on, uh, looks at you and she says, well, let's go. Don't you think that if we go after them, we will end up doing to their guardians what he did to your father? Um, she pauses, <laughs> having not quite considered that. This is a very delicate problem. But, from everything that I know, I think that there is something that all of these people, with their knowledge of these three weapons, with their methods on how best to go about preventing their usage, I think there's something that they are ignoring or missing entirely. And that is whatever force is behind their existence. If they are tied to the void, and I think they are, I don't want to give you false hope, but I cannot reconcile with a life where I do not consider that we can break this curse, that we can fight against whatever created those swords. I think that's the answer. Um, kind of claps her hands behind her back and sort of looks down, and just kind of poutedly nods. Although, what should I do then? Um, what should you do? You should... Ral looks up, and then he looks over at Raiju, and the twig passed Raiju that Raiju ignored, and then the other students in the courtyard... Uh, one was like, yo, is that a lightning dog? You should... Keep writing me letters. Uh, she perks up a little, and then she nods. Um, and I'll keep practicing my spelling. 
I kind of fall asleep during letters. You have superb handwriting. I think it's better than mine. <laughs> it actually is, despite the fact that she can't spell some of the words. Um, and when I return those letters, I will send you little illustrations of the places I'm visiting. How about that? And, and your kite, of course. Um, she seems considerably a lot more happy now that you've mentioned the kite. <laughs> Ross stands up. <sighs> no more questions? This is the last opportunity you have to ask them in person. Um, she kind of thins her lips and she furrows her brows. What uh, what do you plan to do next, Ra? Uh, there is a failure that has been hanging over my head in the past four or five odd days. I plan to take the necessary steps to right that wrong. And I better dress warm. Uh, she kind of opens her mouth and then she closes again. Well, uh, I'm going to go find Mat Matthias in the way. Ross smiles and then takes his leave. And she goes wandering off to do her own thing, finding uh, Matias and Lei, uh, the two others that were with her. She goes off to find Team 5 with uh, Shikamaru and Kiba. Basically. Um, Alright, so Ra's going to go look for Sid. Um. Uh, uh, he, he's gonna go to the front desk and ask if they can notify Sid of his presence. Actually, because that's probably the best way to go about things now. Um. The desk clerk uh, looks at you, and he kind of looks at his papers, and he says, uh, "Right now, Sid is doing drills in the court. In the um." training yard could you forward him a message for me then of course um Ra just kind of stands there awkwardly, looking down at the countertop as he tries to find the words. Raiju crackles a little. Hmm. Uh, the desk attendant looks at you and looks at uh, your familiar, just kind of blinking a couple of times. It's just got like this blue th thrumming underneath its fur. I take it back. Don't tell him it's from me, but make sure you tell him he's done a good job here with the Academy. Oh, of course. Uh, will there be anything else wrong? Um, no. I don't think so. Hmm. Well, then, uh, trust you'll have a good day. And... Ra takes off. He's gonna... He's gonna sit down with the lightning crystal again. Okay. And he looks at Raiju, 
after he, he's probably doing this in the streets at this point he's a little tired of finding spaces off that are that are out of the way so he just he finds a vacant bench somewhere and he sits down he just looks at Raiju and he says so from what I hear you come from a place like well like what Ifrit made right uh it just sort of flickers at you <laughs> and he looks at the lightning magicite how do I use this to get there he looks at the crystal and reconciles with the fact that the dog's probably not going to just start talking to him and he's going to roll arcana to see if he can figure anything out for himself. Okay. Uh, you kind of just squint your eyes, you turn it this way and that, you watch how the shard just gleams in the daylight, how the contours are sort of highlighted, the sparkly sheen, but you really don't get much other than the fact that it thrums with a soft magic. You know, he starts talking to the dog again, but he's still looking at the rock. I got this from a homeless man. And then he looks at the dog, and now I am a homeless man. He looks at the rock. <laughs> but I don't think anybody's going to be buying me a meal like I bought one for him. Ah, well. Uh, Raiju sits down and he rubs the paw on the back of its snout. Rod dismisses Raiju. Alright, so with a surge of lightning, it just... And then he squints his eyes and he goes, hmm... And then he casts Otherworldly Call again, paying attention to what exactly happens when Raiju comes into existence. Um, Otherworldly Call is your channel divinity, is it not? Uh, it's also a first level spell. Is it? I thought I changed it to be a channel divinity. Is it only channel divinity? Because if that's the case, then, then yeah, I can only do it twice. Which means that that consumes both. I made it a channel divinity because spell secrets is a thing. What's spell secrets? It's a bard thing where a bard can learn a spell. Right, from right, any yep. Any fucking spell uh -huh. ever. Great. Uh, so. So yeah, I'll I'll use my second channel divinity to conjure conjure ride you again. And I'm paying attention to uh. What what happens? Well, hop on. All right. Um, since you're paying attention, uh, yeah, give me another Arcana check. And the result is... 19. 19, all right. So, with this the best you can tell? that when you do your channel divinity uh, you reach out to basically you're reaching out to Ramu and beseeching his assistance in so doing you feel this the briefest flash through your mind uh, there's a just kind of like a lightning crack and in that just brief as glimpse you see Ramu's face and then another crack and you see a tower uh, this tower resting among many towers in a vast plain with lightning bolts flickering through the air between clouds is there a blonde guy trying to dodge it uh no How's he going to get the celestial weapons then, Robert? 
Um, Game Shark. <laughs> true. Okay. So, after that, Ra gets a sort of sly kind of smile, and he pats Raiju's head, and he says, Thank you, boy. I think you've given uh, me what I need. Uh, give me... Give me a history check. Ah, oh, damn. Wanted to see if you could crit. Oof. That's fine. Yeah, the DC was high. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Um, alright, so... Okay, but a 50 gets you this. Uh, the towers look very vaguely passing familiar. You can't see them well. They seem distant, and they seem heavily silhouetted. Familiar? But they feel passingly familiar. Familiar? They feel familiar. What the fuck? <laughs> like, like... You think Where, tower, the, where the hell am I... Think of the, you think of the outline of this tower. And you think that you've seen that shape before. Is it the tower that was what resulted in the upheaval? I don't know. <laughs> Frantically scribbles out notes. <laughs> Not that tower. Um, Alright. Well, either way, Ra thinks he's gotten something from it. And as he stands up, he says, We're going to do some talking with myth. That's what we're going to do. Let's go find the others. And then we can probably pick up next, uh, not next Thursday, but the Thursday after. Okay. That was certainly more than just the ninja. Recording over, or is there anything else you want to do? No, no. I think we got done uh, everything you want to do. Great. 